A telephone call on this red phone years ago changed my life, and it went like this. Hello, is this Lola? My name is Bill Gladden. I'm from Savannah, Georgia, and I'm calling you this evening because I was born in Miami Valley Hospital in Dayton, Ohio, on December 15, 1945. I have reason to believe that you are my birth mother. I'm a happily married attorney. I have two children who would be your beautiful grandchildren. I don't have any financial needs or any psychological needs. I just thought that you would like to know what happened, and we would like to meet you. Dead silence on the other end during which my worst fears come out that she will want to have nothing to do with her past. Finally, after the pause, the first words my mother ever spoke to me. Bill, is it? I have no doubt but that you are who you say you are. I have never explained you to my husband, or my family, or anyone. I need to have some time to do that. I said, I understand. Here's my home phone number, my work phone number, so that you can call back when you wish, and I hope it's soon. She says, thank you, Bill. Click. <laughs> that was quick. Would she have the courage to explain me her secret to her family? Would they be upset? Would they sabotage the reunion that I had waited so long for? It all started with family secrecy. I never understood why my adoptive parents, Ken Gladden and Kay Gladden, kept my adoption a secret. I loved them, they loved me, and when I found out, I was, felt very lucky. I felt blessed, particularly since right up the street from our house was the county orphanage. There, but for the grace of God, went I. And I'm not the only one to feel this way. I have learned that there are over 7 million adoptees in the United States today. The ones that I have talked to all are very grateful for having been adopted and look upon their adoptive parents as their real parents. But they also tell me at some time in life, it's natural they want to know more about where they came from, why they were adopted, do they have any medical conditions they might have inherited, do, what's their ethnicity, do they have brothers and sisters, have their parents been searching for them? I didn't get the urge to search until on my 37th birthday, my wife said something very challenging to me. It was different. It hit me right between the eyes. She said, Bill, 37 years ago today, a woman gave you birth. No, she gave you life. I bet she had a very difficult time giving you up. I bet she would like to know how well things have worked out for you and that she has two beautiful grandchildren she could dote upon. Yes, I had always felt a little loss, but it was logical that my birth mother would even have a greater loss, and my kids had one living grandparent. Two more might be out there. So I'm thinking maybe I'll search and in thinking about that, I had to overcome the number one reason why many adoptees don't search. And that is fear of the unknown. Am I opening up a can of worms? Will they reject me? Am I going to find some not so very nice people? Am I going to be related to the Unabomber or Kardashians? <laughs> <laughs> So I decided I'm going to do this, fear isn't going to get in my way, and so I charged right ahead into the wall. The wall is adoptees learn that the state statutes allow the custodians of their records to give them non-identifying descriptive information, 
which means they can tell you the eye color of your mother, the hair color, her birth date, her religion, her, her, her work choice, her, all kinds of things except where to, who she is, where to find her. That's the end of it for almost all searches. You get that information, that's it, search over. I was lucky. I had some other information. I learned that I had a brother named Terry. So I go to the county courthouse and find the name change record where I became Bill Gladden, and it said I was Baby Clark. So I've got Terry Clark and a birth date. I go to the state birth records. There he is. His mother is Lola Clark. Her birth date is the birth date in my adoption records of my mother. This is looking like it. I check driver's license records. She's driving around, so she's alive. I check business records. She is listed as the owner of the Orchard Inn Bar. Mom owns a bar. This is good. This is getting good. She has a listed telephone number, which takes us back to the call and her need to explain her big secret, me, to her family. And the next morning, 8 o'clock early, phone's ringing. It's Lola. Oh, they're okay with this. <laughs> they want to meet you too. So I take my family up to meet her. I can't explain to you the feeling of looking at your birth mother for the first time. There's an aha moment of familiarity on several very good levels. We spent the first day catching up with each other, taking legacy photos, and actually she spent much, most of the first day playing with her newly found grandchildren. At the end of the day, she said, she pulls me closely and says, I want you to know that I am thrilled to know that you were adopted at all. That was never a given. I always thought that it could be the worst and that it worked out as well as I could have wished. I got to meet three siblings. My favorite of the three was Terry Clark. <laughs> Terry now lives in Florida and he lives in a nudist colony, so I have to visit him right away. <laughs> Um, the bad news was that 37 years after a brief affair, Lola remembered very little about my birth father. So I had to sadly explain to my children that there's not enough information. We just never will know anything about him. Then last fall, I get a call from my son. He says, Dad, I just did this DNA kit. You know where this is going, right? <laughs> I just did this DNA kit, and I'm closely related to someone named Melinda. I've talked to her on the phone, and we think that maybe our families are related through your missing birth father. So I said, well, let's check that out. So I order the kit, spit in the vial, and send it in. Just like 15 million Americans have done, 4 million in the last year alone. It comes back. 25% of your DNA matches Melinda and Joanne. 99% certainty they are your half-sisters. So, Facebook... <laughs> <laughs> Joanne has a picture of her and her two brothers, Mike and Bill. I'm Bill and I have a brother, Bill. She has a picture of her deceased father, Ernest, who would be my father. We had our first family reunion last month. Um, at the family reunion, many of them thought, I looked as much like Ernest as anybody. And they're good people. I like them. They're interesting. But most interesting was that my father, Ernest, like me, was adopted. Only... In his era, there was no DNA. He never knew who his birth parents were. So at the reunion, we hop on the internet, and it doesn't take long, we identify his parents, something he could never do. 
So as these DNA databases grow exponentially, there's, the chances are increasing that many of you in this room will get a call from a DNA relative. <laughs> and when you do, help them. They are trying to find a portion of their identity. They are trying to overcome family secrets. They are trying to unseal sealed records. They're trying to have a reunion with their biological family. I can tell you, uncertainty is bedeviling. And just knowing correct facts about yourself makes anyone feel more complete. And isn't the truth a good thing to share? Thank you. Thank you.